This is Debunk TV. Bob Coons here, Carl Kirby right there. Welcome Amen. back. Hey, before we get started into this topic, which is going to be a fun one to do, we, we got to tell <laughs> this the world. a tough one. <laughs> it's a fun one, though. We yeah. got to tell the world uh, where to find us and, and how to connect with us. So Absolutely. Here, here, here we are on the internet. My friends, go to getdebunked.org. Yep. Instagram at getdebunked. Yep. YouTube forward slash getdebunked. Facebook. 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 <laughs> time <laughs> at Debunk Ministries. Are people still on Facebook? They probably are. What do I know? And the app, the most important one, which should yeah. be at the top probably, getdebunk.org forward slash app or go to your, your app store and then download it. Look for R4H. You'll reasons find for reasons, for for hope. reasons for Hope. Sorry, yep. Reasons for Hope. Okay, just so you know, Reasons for Hope is the parent company of Debunked Ministries. So that's that. Thanks for joining right yes. into the subject right now. This is a big one. It is. One of the biggest questions people still have. How at can there be a good At least guy? top three. Yeah, at least it, top three. It hasn't changed. Has for, not for changed. 20 or 25 years. It's you know, I, I, I've been doing ministry for over 20 years now, and I can tell you right now that there are certain questions that I got asked 10 years ago that just are never asked anymore. Right. This is not one of them. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they said, suffering disproves a good God. Here's the claim. The claim goes like this. You know, if God is all good, he wouldn't allow anything bad. If he loves us, he'd make sure we get everything we want and nothing bad would ever happen to us, ever. Huh. It sounds like utopia, but that's not reality. It's not reality. It's and not reality. And I, yeah. you know, I, by the end of this, I actually would say a good God would not not allow yeah. pain and suffering because the way He there's, uses there's it, there's purposes. There's purposes for yeah. it. But we can just ramble on all day, or, or you can you can just watch this. Watch the boat. Check it out. A not so new claim is being regurgitated all across the globe these days, and it goes a little something like this. There's so much pain and suffering in the world, there can't be a good God. Well, let's dive in. But before we do, let me tell you, this is the fastest response to this claim known to man, and is merely a plain, kind of logical, and no way comprehensive one, hurled upon you sans emotion and utterly lacking gentility. This is debunked, after all, not de nice. Okay, we're going to break this claim down in two parts and respond in rapidly rational rhetoric, rightly rendering reason right before your very eyes. Two little duck ducks all in a row. Let's knock them down. Duck numero one. A good God wouldn't allow pain and suffering. Really, why not? Seriously, what if the temporal nature of pain and suffering was actually necessary to accomplish a greater eternal thing? I mean, that's how the Apostle Paul understands it. Listen to his words. But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. He continues with, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And he brings it home with this, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So Paul realizes at least from a Christian perspective, that pain, suffering, and trials are real but temporary, necessary in preparing us for something greater, and not worth even comparing to the eternal life God grants us through Christ. Now, my pal Mr. Lewis, C.S., not Jerry, wrote this, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world. A duck dose. If there is a God, he doesn't care about us. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow pain and suffering. Okay, here's a bit of history and context for clarity coming at you solo style on less than 12 parsecs. God creates a beautiful, good, sinless, and perfect universe for us to live and flourish in. We utterly destroy it by our own free will. Then we keep on committing horrible crimes against him and each other even though we know better. But he doesn't lop off our heads the minute we do something bad. He's patient with us and pursues us in love, steps into time and space as the God-man Jesus gives his life for ours, takes on the punishment we deserve by dying on a cross, then conquers sin and death when he resurrects from the dead, allowing anyone who repents of their sins and places their trust in him to be redeemed, restored, renewed, and live in paradise with him forever, even though we don't deserve it. Now, does that sound like a God who doesn't care? I think not. Ah, that's fine and all, you say. But I can't see a good and morally sufficient reason why this particular bad thing happened to this person, so I don't believe there's a good God. So answer me this. What percentage of all there is to know do you know? And let's say you know 0.001%, which is pretty liberal considering you and all there is to know. The God described in the Bible knows 100% of all there is to know. Somewhere in that gaping chasm between the little you know and all that God knows, you're telling me there can't be a morally sufficient or good reason why God might allow something bad to happen? Happen, you're banking on the impossible chance that you know more than God. So you're telling me there's a chance. No, Lloyd, no chance. 
and I end with this because I want to. In Job 38 through 41, God asked Job, a man who went through untold sufferings but started questioning God's motive and character, a series of questions. Here's my fave. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you establish their role on earth? Paraphrase, I create stars and planets, bro. I establish all laws out of thin air that govern the universe, and you want to question me? Well, Job gets it and says this, Behold, I am of small account. I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. I have uttered what I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I do not know. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. I don't know, but maybe this should be our position when it comes to questioning God about things we have little capacity to fully understand. It might be a bit wiser to do what the psalmist says and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because honestly, when it comes to comparing our knowledge to God's, we don't know Jack. But we can know Jesus, the ultimate remedy for all pain and suffering and the one that will put an end to all evil. And that is that on that. This claim that there can't be a good God if there is pain and suffering, this faulty notion that God doesn't care about us, has been utterly debunked. Adios. Boom. We're going to unpack this a lot. Yes. There's uh, a lot to unpack. There is. But before that, watch this. The last several years, the R4H team got teens to jot down questions about the Bible. We wrote a book about it. Did Jesus commit suicide? And 27 other questions teens are asking about the Bible that adults want to know too. Yeah, long title, but a great book. Get it today at R4H.com. Lead Wisconsin is what you've been looking for. This immersive leadership and worldview camp has it all. Using government and civics as a platform for this unique program, Lead Wisconsin allows teens to not just hear about biblical worldview and leadership, but to practice them. As they role play being Wisconsin legislators and tackle real Wisconsin bills, culminating in a session on the floor of the Assembly Chambers of the State Capitol. First-time campers are in the Assembly track, while returning campers are in the Senate or Media track. Lead Wisconsin features world-class worldview speakers, and each evening we have speakers who give personal stories of what it means to be sold out for God. Think Lead Wisconsin is a no-fun, boring government camp? Think again. We have all the fun of a summer camp and all the other good stuff. The perfect mix of challenging and fun, Lead Wisconsin was so far the best week of my life. I can honestly say God used Lead Wisconsin to change my life. This week was packed full of good truths, encouragement to live for Christ, and encouraging people. This is one of the greatest opportunities you will have during your teen years. Don't miss it. Have the best week of your life this summer at Lead Wisconsin. Check us out at leadwi.org. If you're looking for a ton of free apologetics content, including debunk videos, debunk TV, and our new one-minute episodes of Apologetics with Reasons for Hope, download our free app today. Just go to your favorite app store on your smartphone, tablet, or TV and search Reasons for Hope. Look for the blue asterisk on the black background and just hit the download button. We're constantly adding new content and working hard to give you the resources to help you give biblical answers to today's questions and inspire you to engage with culture and stand boldly on the Word of God. The last several years, the R4H team got teens to jot down questions about the Bible. We wrote a book about it. Did Jesus commit suicide? And 27 other questions teens are asking about the Bible that adults want to know too. Yeah, long title, but a great book. Get it today at R4H.com. All right, we're back and... Hope you enjoyed that video and kind of know where we're, where we're going with this. But, uh, you know, I have a question. We do this mic'd up man on the street thing. I want to reverse it kind of a little bit here and do a man in the studio question. Mm-hmm. Because if I went out and asked you, you know, does, does suffering and pain disprove God, Carl? What, what, what would you say? Let me give you two things. Yeah. First, I didn't tell you this story, and it just came to my head. So he's going to be like, Carl, time! Uh, <laughs> that debunked video, before yeah. we released it, I took it to a couple who had lost their daughter. Mm. Tragic, right? And I showed it to him because it's like, we got to be sensitive. This is not an easy topic. People are hurting from this. This is real, right? And I showed it to him and said, what do you think? And what encouraged me is that they both said, yes, this needs to be said. So the the point that I want to make is that when somebody asks me that question, it's a real question. It's something that all of us struggle with. And mine is my story about my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, October of 2019, my wife was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, just a routine checkup, right? She goes into the doctor and they find this thing. And... It's, it's cancer after they do the PET scan, the CAT scan, and all this sort of a thing. The very first Sunday after the diagnosis, this is her and my assistant Candace, I'm speaking at a church. I'm a wreck. Look at her. She's smiling, man. I mean, she smiled during this whole time, bub. She smiled. She had peace. She's like, Carl, I have no bucket list. We have done everything. God has been so gracious to us. But I didn't handle it like that. I was t- torn up on the inside. But at that very first speaking event, um, 
I did okay the first one. The second one towards the end, I, I broke a little bit. And I try not to invoke emotional type mm -hmm. stuff in that because I don't want to sometimes manipulate. Yeah. And it just hit me. And at the very end, this young lady comes up to me. And there's a bunch of people talking to me. But this one young lady, she points over at the altar. There's a guy on his knees praying. And the lady that's got her hand on him, she said, you see that guy? Yeah, that's my brother. He was going to commit suicide. We brought him to church today. He's over there receiving the Lord. And when he came over, I was able to tell him. I hadn't told the church. Yeah. I was able to tell him what we were going through, that we thought my wife had pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And look, life is, don't give up on it, right? Yeah. Well, fast forward. Now she goes into the hospital. She has the surgery. They mm -hmm. take out 60% of her pancreas. Uh, they take out her spleen. They take out a, a golf ball-sized cyst on her, on her uh, pancreas. This is right out. Of, she's rolling out of surgery, bro. She's still smiling. And I'm like, I'm a wreck. I am a wreck. I am like, what? God, I can't do this. Yeah. I couldn't even pray out loud, man. Yeah. I had, when we were praying, it was, Masam, you got to pray. I couldn't pray out loud. I was breaking down. Yeah. I was just so broke. Yeah. Five days later, I think it was, we get this picture. Mm -hmm. And my son and my daughter just happened to be there. The doctor walks in and tells us it's not pancreatic cancer. She's still smiling. Yep. I mean, this whole time she smiled. And, so what and did I, they take out? I mean, that's just... Yeah, they, they took they it. Took it, was out, just, it, it turned still, out to be serous cystadenoma. Okay, they needed to take it out anyway. Yeah, serous yeah. cystadenoma. It's not cancerous, but it's a, it was it's a bad. cyst. Yeah, it was okay. growing. Yeah. So, the, but the point was this, is that even if it had been cancer, she had peace. Right. Because she knows the Lord. I knew the Lord. I didn't have peace, oh man. And so that's why I don't want to make light of people suffering. Yeah. The suffering is real. But I think the closer we can get to God, the more that we can know that he's in control. And it's not his fault that she had that. It's not the fault of right. uh, him, him making these things happen. It's our fault. Right. What if the one thing that God allowed Masami to have this was that guy not committing suicide? Isn't and that crazy? To why isn't that? Because God cares... I mean, he cares about us here. Yes. But what he's aiming for is the eternal. Yes. Right? So if I have to do something here on earth to mess with your temporal state exactly. for an eternal good, I will use whatsoever because I love you. That's right. Right? And and even even if you don't have peace during a, during a, a time because it, it could hurt, it could be, it doesn't mean you lack faith or trust in God. No, no. It's just yeah. you're, you're broken. So, something yeah. happened. But both of you, right? I mean, I've been through... Pain and suffering. Absolutely. Everyone I know has been. Absolutely. Uh, most most Christians, all of them, have been through it. And it's it's interesting to me that I grow the most during the pain and suffering. So God's it. got something in store by using the very thing we created to step into the world right. and, and use that very thing to draw us toward him. Because in despair, you call out to him, right? There's no atheists in foxholes, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Like when we get down to the bare essentials of, of life, we cry out. And it's, it's instinctive to, to cry out to God. And he uses all kinds of, of turmoil and, and I stuff. I know what happened with me, man. Yeah. Because I was broke. And but, I was like... But you're grounded. Again, the, the, thing, the thing that grounds us, right, is there's truth in Scripture. Yes. Right? So Masami knew what was going to happen. Exactly. I mean, she didn't know what was exactly. going to happen to her. She knew where she's going. Absolutely. She knew God would take care of you that and the kids. That was her peace. That was her peace, yeah. right? You knew it. Yeah. But you were just hurt. It still hurts, So yeah. it's like, but thank God you had that, because had you not had that, you may have just fallen apart completely. Oh, absolutely. So, right? You didn't absolutely. have nothing to absolutely. stand for. So no. Scripture becomes incredibly, incredibly important. And, yes. But. There's a problem. <laughs> there, there is because always you, a problem. You, you're going to hear people say this a lot. Well, the Bible says, mm -hmm. and and so one of the things that I tell people all the time now, Bub, is that when somebody tells me that the Bible says, I immediately say, let's go look at the book. Yes. Because people tell me a lot of things the Bible supposedly says that it doesn't actually say. So much. And here's an example yeah. of that. <laughs> of of our, our, one of our leaders. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Good book says, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't throw stones in glass houses. I'm, we're not poking fun at, at, at him, but the, this is what happens. We're talking about biblical literacy in our in our country yes. and our in our leaders. And was there an outcry though over this? Did you think there was an outcry over people because people are there? Oh yeah, you have to know scripture so you, that you know, you can know when not somebody's not there, telling you right? scripture. There's no, there was no glass back back in the time. Uh, no glass house. This is not what the scripture <laughs> says. It does never say throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but. You can, you can get scripture wrong, yes. but then you can also do something which is probably even worse, which is take, you know, you can put words in scripture that aren't yeah. true, but then you can take things out of context. And please, if you're watching this and you really love me, please find this cup and send it to me because I love it. I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. Send, send two. Send two. <laughs> send two. <laughs> One for I, I want that. It, it's so much stuff is taken out of context. Yes. And then what happens is you start, if you hear a lie that's supposed to be 
uh, accredited, accredited to God, and then that does it falls apart. You think God's a liar, and it's wrong. So he that's can't right. he can't be God because he's wrong. But that's not what he said in exactly. the first place. It's all these straw men. So context yep. and just making up stuff that the Bible says or doesn't say, which is like why that Mickey we, thing. We have to address the biblical illiteracy because yep. if not, then you get Mickey from Rocky saying, "Yeah, basically, he just said, uh, yeah, like the good book says, you don't get no second shots, kid." Or something. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like no, and it doesn't say that. Doesn't but say it, that. It's like anyway. So we're gonna go and let's. This is important. We're gonna go right to what Scripture actually says. Yes, because the perspective. Of, of pain and suffering is what shifts in you. Pain and suffering doesn't go away. It ultimately does because Christ will take it away Amen. And, and God's going to restore heaven and earth. But this is how we shift our perspective to realize it because Jesus himself promised there will be tribulation in this Absolutely. world. Absolutely. And we got to prepare for that. He'll be with us. He'll comfort us. He'll guide us like he did with you and like he does Absolutely. in my life. Absolutely. But there are realities and here are the perspective shifters. Hmm. Romans 5, 3 through 5a, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Carl, we rejoice in our suffering. Isn't that crazy? I, I never understood that yeah. verse. I mean, rejoice? I mean, you don't see that in a yeah. lot of suffering. You see a lot of, even what I went right. through, just doubt. Yeah. and Not really doubt. I didn't have doubt. I knew God was there, but I was like, Cry I out. struggled, yeah. man. I really struggled. But when you read later on in that verse... It tells you what actually happens, and it's good stuff. When you go through this process and you draw closer to the Lord, He uses those things yeah. to turn you into this amazing light to shine for people. Yeah. Sometimes I think we never outgrow our five-year-old selves, mm. right? Yeah. We, the five-year-old goes, "Mom, why, why do you love mom and dad? Because they give me cupcakes." Uh, I mean, yeah. I, it's my, it's from my perspective yeah. what I get. Well, you know, wh why do you love mom? Well, because it feels good when I get scared, they hold me. So we 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 still connect this like God's supposed to to be a genie mm -hmm. and give me everything mm -hmm. I want. Right. And you know what if what would happen if you gave your kid everything they wanted? It would be bad. That would be bad. So right God in, teeth. in his <laughs> right. In his infinite wisdom knows exactly Absolutely. what works and what doesn't for each individual and for the whole to glorify Absolutely. his name. And he's not going to do something to satisfy you that's against the, his very nature just that's because right. you want it. That's and right. I think we if I it's hard because when you probably said, why is this happening? Well, stop it. Just end this. It's not I right. Will. I, I yeah, love I you and she loves you. Why? What? Just fix this. You know, and like from our perspective, yeah. it's do what I want you to do yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the thing that helped me the most was remembering that it's not his fault. It's yeah. my fault. Yeah. We've all sinned. We all, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're suffering for the, consequ uh, the consequences of the actions and decisions that we've all made. Yeah. And as Christians, this is a great one to hold on to, yeah. right? I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. What an incredible hope. Well, th think of the suffering that Jesus went through for us. Yep. And he didn't need to. Right. He didn't need to. Yeah, it wasn't like it he wasn't did this. Fault. It wasn't it was, his fault. Yeah. And he goes through that. And so that was that was kind of the piece that was hanging on. It was like, he's going to carry through. And so, I, I, again, I've shared this with you before. Yep. Again, we're all this mosaic. We've all got these broken pieces that we can take and allow the Lord to arrange into a beautiful picture so that we can shine for somebody else. And when you do that, these verses give you hope. Yeah, and, you, and hold on to them because these are the, these are the verses we're going to need more and more as this time draws near. Absolutely. 2 Corinthians 4.17, for this light momentary affliction. Now, notice how he says that. Because why? Because it's temporal. Yes. Right? is preparing for you an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So the idea is not that you don't have pain and suffering, right, but the idea right. compared to eternity, it's minimal. It's a, it's a, it's momentary. Absolutely. And, and and knowing that, we can just we can process because no one's going to live past a well, at least now, 100 110 years old or whatever. Yeah. And so we know the the most we're going to actually suffer as a believer is is on this earth. Yeah. Because you know, Revelation twenty one fourteen says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. The ultimate hope. That's the ultimate hope. The, we will be face to face with He Christ. is going to yeah. come back. He's going to do what he said he did. He said he's going to do. He's, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And that... Absolutely. You think about what happened in the beginning, perfect creation. He gave it to us, gave us an opportunity. We destroyed it, but he's coming again to give us that perfect place to be with him where it's not going to happen anymore. If you're looking for a ton of free apologetics content, including debunk videos, debunk TV, and our new one-minute episodes of Apologetics with Reasons for Hope, download our free app today. Just go to your favorite app store on your smartphone, tablet, or TV and search Reasons for Hope. Look for the blue asterisk on the black background and just hit the download button. 
We're constantly adding new content and working hard to give you the resources to help you give biblical answers to today's questions and inspire you to engage with culture and stand boldly on the Word of God. we got a new resource for you. This is our new book, Did Jesus Commit Suicide? and 27 other questions teens are asking about the Bible. And you can see that parenthetical (laughs) thing that adults want to know too. This is our whole team plus some friends of the ministry. What happened for years now is that when I'm, when we do camps, I mean, there's four of us now speaking, when we go do camps, we hand out index cards on day one to these young people and say, what is keeping you from selling out for the Lord Jesus Christ? Write it down, turn it in. I don't want your name. I'm not trying to make anybody feel stupid. Turn in what's keeping you from selling out. That's what we're going to deal with. This is a compilation. We've got a whole bunch more questions. But what we did is as a team, I put up a whole list of questions that I've been compiling now for over 15 years, right? Well, we've compiled them, and so we t- the whole team came together, took these questions, and we've give, given them good, solid answers that you can take and you can use with your youth, your children, whoever it is, even your peers. Yeah, good book. Grab it, share it. R4H.com. Go buy it. If you're looking for a ton of free apologetics content, including debunk videos, debunk TV, and our new one-minute episodes of Apologetics with Reasons for Hope, download our free app today. Just go to your favorite app store on your smartphone, tablet, or TV and search Reasons for Hope. Look for the blue asterisk on the black background and just hit the download button. We're constantly adding new content and working hard to give you the resources to help you give biblical answers to today's questions and inspire you to engage with culture and stand boldly on the Word of God. One more thing before we go on to, uh, uh, we're going to show you a a video clip, but uh, uh, People, people that want God to do something immediately, yeah. I always ask them, should he start with you? Absolutely. So you did something wrong, then you're done. You're, you're dead. You, because that, that's not the heart of God, right? His yeah. long suffering. Absolutely. And he, doesn't want, he wants all to come to repentance. So the, the, the length of our suffering is, is held and controlled by God for an incredible purpose. Absolutely. For salvation, for sanctification. Mm-hmm. But that, that always puts them on back on their heels. It's like, oh, great. Let's, he's going to eradicate evil. Let's start with you right now. Is that what you yeah. wanted to do? Yeah. Because you just messed up. So or, or, is it over? How about your kids? See ya. How about your... Like, That's right. Don't you want a little grace? A little Absolutely. In, the, in that time? Because ultimately God <clears throat> will eradicate it. Take a look at this clip. The idea is that we are all going to have dark periods. But God is light. And His desire is to bring us into that light. I needed to keep reminding myself, and April kept reminding me of this as well, that God has got this, and He's got us, because He's not dead. He is alive. Suffering is a part of life. There is no way around it. We suffer. All people suffer. In fact, even Jesus suffered. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 39, it says, And Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, please take this cup from me, but not as I will, but as you will. What amazing suffering Jesus endured. But there was a reason for it. Because there would be no Calvary without Gethsemane. We have to realize that according to our passage, we cast all our care upon him for he cares for us. We have to learn to trust him. The only way we can have strength in our trials is by casting it all upon Jesus. Because He's the only one that loved us with perfect love, even though He endured the worst pain that was caused by us. And it's like loading a pack animal, that we give it an insane burden, but the animal, because it's sure-footed, carries it. In the same way, Jesus is going to carry us through. He can handle it. Jesus is strong enough to carry the load no matter how heavy a load we may give him. So we need to be people who relinquish our burdens onto him. Why? Because he can take it even when we can't. 1 Peter 4, 7 tells us, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. And when we're going through things like this, it's time to get serious. 
God is allowing this into our lives so that we can focus on Him. 1 Peter 5 then continues and says, Be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom it may devour. We have to be people who learn vigilance. The reason that we have to be vigilant and be on guard is that we face an enemy that is fierce and relentless and wants to do us harm, even though God does not. Many people in the days that this was written understood the picture because they probably witnessed the spectacle of lions devouring their friends and family in the Colosseum. The battle we face is a spiritual one, and since God is the victor, we do not need to run in fear. We can stand firm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, uh, there you go, bub. That's some good stuff. Yeah, powerful. I got to tell you, Pastor Frank, to me, he's one of us, man. He's mm -hmm. going through the ringer. He and his wife, they've run through it. And he, when he made that comment of, you can't have Calvary without Gethsemane, that really stuck with me, yeah. man, because it's like, yeah, that's true. And who was it that went through that? It was Christ, Christ. himself that didn't yeah. have to do this, as we've said before. So Yeah, I think and when you summarize it and look back, like, would a good God allow pain and suffering? Absolutely he would, and he'd use it for, for his purposes. And like Clay said, like, uh, eternity will dwarf our suffering in the insignificance. Absolutely. Right? We will have a temporary issue. Jesus said we would. Yep. We caused it. Yep. And yet God still acts with it and among it to save us from yep. it and, and, and to love us. And this is why... We have to remember what Christ went through, who didn't right. deserve it. That's exactly. Right? And this is what Scripture says on that. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Amen. He went through it all. He, he did. He was sinless, and he was hopeful. And I th another reason that I think a lot of people may, may overlook why God would allow that suffering mm. to happen mm. is so you can comfort and bless somebody else. Amen. That's right? a great point. And that's 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction, yep. so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction that's right. with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Amen. So Amen. sometimes when we're getting beat up or dragged yeah. through it, it could be just like what Masami went through for that guy. I'm telling you. To not commit suicide, that we got to go through some pain and you. suffering to reach a guy that lost. Absolutely. Right. That, and please take those broken pieces that you've got, allow the Lord to put them together to make that beautiful picture. And if you need some help, look, we we, we want to be able to help. So one way, if you need some prayer, we actually have a Facebook page that yep. it's the R for H prayer site. You go there, you put your prayer requests up there, and we got folks, we got prayer warriors that yep. are praying for these yeah, things, that's man. Amazing. So that's a real tangible way that we can offer to uh, lift you up in prayer. But know this, you're not alone. You're make not sure alone. you know that. If you want to put comments on this video underneath it and just say, hey, this is what I'm going through, that might bless a person. You, you may have no idea. And if we see that and get to it, we'll pray for you. For Amen. That. Amen. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Debunk TV. Adios. See ya.